It's a gorgeous day in Adelaide, South Australia, the cosmopolitan coastal capital of SA, home to 1.3 million people. And that is the view looking down on this wonderful Adelaide Parkland circuit. We're right on the fringe of the city. It's a great place to go racing. Let's check out on our Virgin Australia boarding pass precisely where we're racing this weekend, Adelaide Parkland Circuit. We're proud and privileged to say our 20th visit for supercars to this location, a place that welcomed Formula One back in 1985. Here's our racetrack. What a busy and exciting place it is. And it starts out with a wild ride through turns one and two over the top of the curbs at two. And that's going to be a highlight location as we head into Armour All qualifying. We'll talk more about that in great detail shortly everything through what they describe as the staircase is second gear stuff and traction and turn is very important then this very fast right hander approaching from 245 kilometers an hour into turn eight it's bitten people today and it has done in the past there's a passing and a big braking moment down there into turn nine into the hairpin and then round the back of the pit lane area through turn 13 and 14 the second last and final corners our sectors start finish line through to the exit of turn number six. The middle sector deals with the approach through turn seven. And this area here has largely been resurfaced for 2018 through to the exit of turn number eight. And our final sector highlighted here into the hairpin at turn nine and brings you all the way back round to the final corner in this complex. It's a great place to race, incredibly tough on the cars in terms of bumps. The curbs are huge. It's pretty low grip out there at the moment. And here's one of the reasons why there's a fair bit of junk on the road from one of the support events early on. And this is at the final corner on the outside of the line. And several people today have made one or two mistakes when they've come out of the racing groove on the track. And that's cost them pretty dearly. That gives you an idea of the view into the pit lane entry area. And again, there's been a couple of mistakes there. And on that topic, big drama earlier in practice two for Cam Waters in the Monster Energy Ford Falcon. With more on that, Greg Murphy. Yeah, thanks, Crompo. Well, incredibly, uh, Cam Waters has just climbed aboard that car and uh, he's sitting in there just getting ready while the team is still working away, the tick free crew. And there's the incident at turn eight, infamous turn eight. A little bit of a slap. Wasn't too bad, but it broke the steering arm on the left-hand side and this was the impact on the right-hand side of that car. So every single corner on this car has been replaced. They're still working feverishly underneath it, just uh, finishing up some of the work. I think the exhaust was just going on there a second ago, just uh, completing that job. And also the big sandwich plate that actually bolts everything in at the back there and, and supports underneath the, the transaxle. That was also replaced on the car. So huge amount of effort gone into it. He's still up, the, up on the stands at the moment. There hasn't been a setup done on this car. And Brad Wisherson, the engineer for it, was telling me they might just have to do a bit of eye job on it and a, and a quick uh, alignment using a bit of string if uh, necessary but uh, you'd have to imagine that they'll be keeping a close eye on this and Cam Waters will be going out fairly ginger I would imagine if this car makes it for qualifying but they are working very hard here at Tickford. Greg Murphy, Rihanna Cree and Mark Larkin in the pit lane in the pit paddock with all the latest. Thanks for the update Greg and interesting to check the data out I went into the Tickford racing truck and actually dug out the information. It went into turn eight into that wall on the left-hand side at precisely 200 kilometres an hour. The secondary impact between turn eight and the hairpin down on the right-hand side, that was still 140 kilometres an hour. So it only wiped 60 k's out of the pace when Cam was trying to steer and brake to try and stay out of trouble. The secondary impact was the one that did all the damage. They've replaced the transaxle, which is the combination of the gearbox and differential in that car. The right side was way worse than the left. On the left side of the car, they had to do the top and bottom arms on the front and the rear suspension. You can imagine all the bracketry, the panels, and all of the secondary things, little components down the line. So you've got to stand and dip your hat to the men and women at Tickford Racing for absolutely performing a miracle to get that car out there. Practice number two was 40 minutes. We've had two sessions of supercars on the racetrack today. The first one went to Jamie Wincup, Red Bull Holden Racing Team. Practice two to Scotty McLaughlin. It's a great resumption of play in the battle between these two great drivers and teams. Shane Van Gisbergen, who's having a bit of a battle at the moment, pulling that car up in position two from Nick Perkat and Tim Slade. Adelaide drivers third and fourth. Chas Mostu had problems in the first session, much stronger in the second than David Reynolds, who's having a bit of a battle getting a balance with that car as well. And then looking further down the order, Richie Stanaway, Tim Blanchard down the bottom. Now, Rich was the quickest of the drivers that we were regarding as rookies so far this weekend. And I say it with my tongue in my cheek because they're really not. They're quite experienced young drivers in varying ways. As we get underway now with this session, 
but he was on for a very good time and made a little mistake. Probably would have put him right on the edge of the top 10. But if you combine practice one and two and look at where he ended up, Stanaway is the quickest of the inverted commas rookies so far. Cars rolling out now in preparation for armor or qualifying. But this will not determine the pole position. That'll be done tomorrow with a top 10 shootout. This will sort everything from 11 through 26. Joining me in commentary, Mark Skate, multiple winner at this location. Our first true indication, Mark, of precisely the form for 2018. And I'll put the money on the table right now that <laughs> says we will continue where we left off in Newcastle. Well, I hope so, because that was an extraordinary set of circumstances, wasn't it, Neil? But the conditions are hot. It's about 33 degrees centigrade out there now. Track temperature, we'll get a number for you, but it's massively up. It'll be 10 degrees higher than earlier. And as they struggle with Lee Holdsworth's car there with some little door problem, it looked like. And here's the, as you said, men and women at Tickford Racing who have done such a good job to get this car. I thought there was no way that car would be repaired. And it's about to wheel out in a second. Chris O'Toole, they're giving the thumbs up. So the air temp at the facility is 31. So you can imagine what the track temp is to your point. That's dramatically up on what it was in that first session this morning. So everybody weaving around trying to make a little bit of temp there at the moment. Not a cloud in the sky at the moment. Very hot. Qualifying now for race one. Fairly gentle breeze out there. So form on the board at this location and in the first practice session today for Jamie Wincup. Reigning series champion, 10 wins in Adelaide. He's got the fastest time of the weekend so far with a 1 minute 20.1 in that brand new Holden ZB Commodore, of which there are 14 of those, 13 brand new chassis here this weekend. It's an extraordinary number when you consider a 26 car field. Five drivers that we regard as rookies, as I was explaining before, and here's Shane Van Gisbergen. So, Shane, the reigning champion. Blackwood's fly cam shows the rundown pit straight. Keeping up is the challenge there because the cars are pretty quick in that location and the run down towards turn number one. They'll reach 220 odd kilometres an hour. Fabian Coulthard. I had a bit of a chat to him very briefly because the drivers are under enormous pressure here at the moment with the constraints on their time. Front locking is driving him a bit crazy at the moment. That is front brake locking and it's a little bit too edgy in the rear was his description when he turns the car in, he said he's just got to settle it down at both ends, but it is getting better. But he expected to drop it onto the racetrack a little bit stronger. Now, a lot of drivers in broad terms, this is a very sweeping statement, but a lot of them are having problems at turn eight because of the variation in grip down there. We've seen one or two have serious problems at turn eight. There's a little bit more drive traction off turn seven, off that newly resurfaced area. They're all battling to get them turned in at the final corner. And they're also battling to get them turned in nicely at turn one. It's, it's kind of a, almost a universal debrief sheet, depending on who you're And the to. bumps are worse at turn four. And the bumps are worse at four. That's it. So as we watch Fabian now, who's probably going to end up fastest after the first run. It's only just a, an out siding lap. McLaughlin usurps that straight away. Van Gisbergen does the same. So... Van Gisbergen 21-9, McLaughlin 22-1, Craig Lowndes 22-4, Jack LeBrock 22-8. These are almost not worth mentioning until they get serious. And we're on board with Shane Van Gisbergen. I was saying to him before about the way this car's riding the bumps, and funny, Roland Day was sitting there with me, and we were talking about how nice it was at Turn 4 at Wakefield Street, and Shane said, well, oh, OK, I, I thought our house was really bad. I'm going to stop complaining about it then. <laughs> uh, I mean, got, that's the fact, isn't it? Yeah, they've all got their hands full. They yep. changed a transaxle on this car between sessions as well. Lee Holdsworth, Preston Hire Racing. This is not a brand new chassis, but it is new bodywork on the car. Got off to a pretty strong start so far in car number 18 for Preston Hire with 12th and 14th, sort of a midfield position. A lot of hard work from that group over the summer period to turn it around. So we're seeing some pretty impressive numbers pop up on screen at the moment for Mark Winterbottom, who's off to a good start so far this weekend. Reynolds has got the best opening account. Reynolds has gone down a second now because Lee Holdsworth actually just knocked in a 1 minute 21.3. If you have a look at that graphic there, just because our graphics are new and updated in the off-season and everyone who's been involved in that, great job. So the purple sectors are best in terms of the field and the green sector there is the personal best, which are the ones that come up on our timing screens 
and the ones that sometimes Neil and I would refer to, but no one else was on the same colour. So we've made those match up. And as you can see there, Mark Winterbottom, who had a host of purple, which is a good sign. He's now fastest for the 21-1. It's a reflection of the colour of your face when you try really hard. <laughs> That's right. It's the same in Formula One. <laughs> because there are places on this and many of the tracks that we go to where you do hold your breath. <laughs> Mark Winterbottom is the fast man at the moment from Garth Panda, who was one of the drivers describing turn eight as being pretty slippery at the moment. Just still having a bit of a battle settling the rear of that car. I thought that overall the grip level was a bit low. And then one of the challenges as Mostert goes to the top on a 20.5, the first driver in the 20s, is something that we describe as track evolution. The track changes as Tim Slade wanders wide at the braking area of Turn 4 at the end of Wakefield Street. Great line of racing. Tracks change as they rubber in and the temperature varies. And we've seen quite a temperature variation today. And keeping up with that and adjusting your car to that, not kidding yourself or tricking yourself into making a change, and then all of a sudden you've gone up a blind alley because everything else around you alters. And uh, that's a real challenge. James Courtney, he's talked about the front of the car being a bit high and they had a loose steering arm on the car as well. They thought that car was good enough for back end of top 10 in the last practice session. There he is, position two. Quickly eclipsed by his teammate who was right in the vortex of the preceding car. So Pi and Courtney, there's Reynolds up into fourth now for car number nine. So Mostert was really the first indicative time of a 20.59 as James just has a little loop at the end of turn four that's a popular spot for going off the road and, and at, sorry now at the end of that when you look at the first lap you were talking about in the previous session could they do it in the first lap or the second lap as the track condition comes up in terms of temperature the more the first lap will be important replay of some action at turn eight and this time it's Mark Winterbottom Gives the wall a kiss on the outside there. It's pretty solid. Yeah, that, that's, that's a enough. A kiss, yeah. Remembering that uh, Wink Cup and Winterbottom have both done this today. Wink Cup did it earlier, but he did it 20.1, remember, in the first session. So they're a lot slower. That picked that's up hit the pretty hard. Well, picked up the inside wheels yeah. when it found something solid to lean on on the outside. So a couple of second-hand door handles for sale at the back of the paddock if you can rush down there at the moment. Brendan Hogan in the window. James Courtney whacked the wall earlier in the day as well in the Mobile One Boost Mobile Holden Commodore. He's off to a good start though, isn't he? So for him, third fastest in the combined practice one and two. Fastest overall win cup, as you pointed out. Second fastest, McLaughlin. Third fastest, Mark Winterbottom. There's the scuff marks. And the reason they're actually putting it back in situ is it's a really good guide. As much as that sounds weird, the, that mirror, a little, a little bit, from an exterior standpoint, a little bit further out than the door or any of the other peripheral bodywork, gives you a serious guide. So you can slide the car through turn eight, and at over 220 kilometers an hour, use that as the guide that you can't go any further. You realize normal people are saying, what, <laughs> really? Use the mirror to figure out where the edge of the racetrack is at 200 kilometers an hour. It's a pretty scary prospect, and that's what it looks like from on board. Most at Pie Courtney, one, two, three. We're riding now. Jamie Wincup into the hairpin. ZB Commodore lines at the rear. A very different looking race car to the one that we saw last year. Todd Hazelwood tucked in behind the reigning Dunlop Super 2 champion. It's an all new deal for him this year with a totally new and different car to come to terms with. McLaughlin's on a serious lap at the moment. And a very, very good lap. Wincup has had six pole positions at this venue, 10 race wins, has dominated this joint. Where does he go? He goes to the top of the 20.47. Fastest so far. Van Giersberger comes up 12 spots to be third with a 20.6. So Wink up, Mostert, Van Giersberger. Lowndes comes up 14 spots. McLaughlin, 20.24. He is now first, up 18 positions. That's a good time. That's very close to the time that Wink up set in cooler, cloud-covered conditions earlier in the day. We're riding with Scotty through turn four. Ryan Story, Ludo Lacroix, Ben Croak, Shell V Power Racing. Kevin Fitzsimmons had his back to us with the Dunlop shirt in the garage as well. Remembering that this year it's a different tyre configuration again. The shoulder of the tyres changed as we go back to Wincup at turn eight. So he's done a 20.47. 
He's got to find two tenths of a second to match McLaughlin. That is a very impressive time given your first remarks were all about UV and temperature. And it's not cool out there by any means at the moment. So pound for pound, that's a better time than we saw from Wind Cup this morning in overcast sure. conditions at a 20.1. For sure. And if you thought that the Newcastle scenario wasn't going to prevail, who's one of two? McLaughlin and Wind Cup. It's on. Mostert's on a good lap here too, Mark. You can see purple on screen on the top left corner of your graphics. So he's gone faster in the first sector than anybody on the racetrack. He just about plucked the mirror off that thing at turn eight as well. In fact, I think he rubbed it. It's Adam, Adam DeBore said, we're there or thereabouts with this car. And I left their truck getting the data from Cam Waters' car. Turn 11, two purple sectors for Chaz Mostert. He's throwing caution to the wind as he pitches that thing sideways on the exit of turn 11. Final corner, which is a huge challenge to get the cars stopped squarely and rotated into the final corner. In the foreground is Simona Di Silvestro. Watch for Mostert to challenge McLaughlin at the top here. Not quite. Final sector didn't actually register. So we're waiting for the time to come up. Red flag. So the red flag come out within 50 metres of Mostert, who was definitely going to the top. It's a shame. So with eight minutes and 56 seconds remaining, we didn't get to see the full stop on that lap, which was a great shame because looking at the two sector splits for Chaz, he was going to improve on the one minute 20.2 that was achieved by Scott McLaughlin. They'll still be heartened by what they've seen, but what a tremendous frustration when you're only metres from the control line and that happens. We're going to try to get those sectors for you and work out what time that was going to be. But as you said, he'll be heartened by it. It was a very good quality lap. We picked up and you had a big breathe when you saw how close it was to the fence at turn eight. So he was already up on sector one. We picked up the proximity of the car to the fence on the way out of turn eight. And then he went on with it. It was a beautiful finish to the lap. And as Ludo looks on at Scott McLaughlin, with directions to driver and crew. So McLaughlin, Winkup, Mostert, Van Gisberg and Lowndes, Caruso, good job. Scott Pye, James Courtney, Dave Reynolds, Mark Winterbottom, remembering damage to Frosty's car from the fence at turn eight. Who's the fastest of the rookies? The fastest rookie is Anton Di Pasquale in 15th at the moment. And I believe Cam Waters was rolled out just at the point where the red came out can actually see his car at the front of the queue at the moment, just beneath our commentary box window. That's Scott McLaughlin that we're looking from the passenger side back towards him at the moment, sitting in position number one on a one minute 20.24, but potentially was under threat from Chaz Mostert. And that is a great side, isn't it? To see the monster energy Ford Falcon from Tickford Racing of Cam Waters. Brad spanking new car that unfortunately took a whack at turn eight. Here it is. I think we're going to show this to you. So there he is. Exiting turn 14 onto the start finish straight. And does the red flag come out? The red flag comes out right there. That's the last flag point before the start finish line. Yeah. Uh, it's more than 50 metres, yeah. so it's probably 200 metres in reality. So here's another view of that. And our eyes were transfixed on the timing to see what the number was going to be at this point. And I'll bet that at that stage, Chaz was pretty focused on the dashboard as well. He would have been looking to see what the number is because he'll see a cockpit indication of whether he's up or down on his own reference lap. There's the control line there with the Adelaide South Australia logo right next to our commentary box window. So <laughs> frustration, but uh, I'd much rather say that was on and we didn't quite get there for reasons that were external than be sitting there scratching your head trying to find half a second. That time, so Oscar's just working that time out for us, that time would have been a 20.2. So the same Ooh. time as McLaughlin. That's pretty uh, tantalising, isn't it? So that's the two best sectors that he had with a lap from before to put an amalgamated lap together, 20.2. So it might be slightly better than that, but a great indication of speed for Chaz Mostert. So the big hitters are at the pointy end. McLaughlin, Winkup, Mostert, Van Giersbergen, Craig Lowndes. For Lowndes fans, how good's that for Autobahn Lowndes Racing? And that's also great. Again, big shout out to our officials and marshals. Fantastic job to clear that debris from the exit of turn 30 eight. Seconds, it's a very dangerous seconds. and fast exit. And well done again for all your efforts. 
Blackwood's fly cam as everybody starts to think now about rolling out and joining the queue in the lane as we'll get close to the resumption of play. The red flag will be released. Saw some images there a moment ago of Rick Kelly's new Castrol Racing Nissan Altima car number 15. Former Adelaide 500 winner. So you can see there's already half a dozen cars up there in the pit lane exit. And this is what happened to Cam Waters. A correction, this is what happened to car number 19. Jack I LeBrock. Say, I beg your pardon, Jack yeah. LeBrock in the techno car. This is a brand new car. And uh, there's quite a few drivers that are having, as I said before, early in this call, quite a battle in their hands, trying to get the read between the varying grip levels at different parts around the track. So that's a decent scar for Jack, car number 19. He's one of the five rookies in the field here this weekend. And he's been successfully participating in both wildcard entries per tech enduro cup and we've seen him doing great things in dunlop super two as well so though he's a rookie he's got a lot of mileage under his belt he's an impressive young guy and he was 16th wonder whether these gentlemen have mended some newcastle wounds i mean they've got a huge respect for each other and it was nice to see them shake hands and walk away from what was a dramatic final race to very good operators of car businesses, car operations, but racing operations and Roger Penske there talking to Roland Dane. What a year we had last year and it's already shaping up with McLaughlin and Wink Up. One and two, it's shaping up the same way. Michael Caruso described his car as sitting on top of the road when I spoke to him just a few minutes ago, just about the behaviour of the car. It's sliding around a little bit. New livery on that car, drive.com.au for car number 23. Jack, Jack LeBrock, you're not the first person to hit a wall this weekend, and certainly won't be the last. Just talk us through what set you up for this qualifying session. Uh, yeah, we just uh, unfortunately had a bit of a run in with turn eight there, so it's yeah, not ideal. Just trying to get through a session on scale, just starting to get a little bit more confidence in the car. It's um, yeah, pretty daunting coming up to the main game and coming straight to Adelaide, but uh, yeah, I was really enjoying it then, and uh, it would make some good headway with the car, but uh, unfortunately, yeah, my mistake, made a little error there, and um, yeah, just feel sorry for all the guys. Yeah, having, starting to get some momentum going, but um, yeah, I'm sure I'll fix it up and we uh, have another go tomorrow. Tough luck, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Thank Jack. You. Cheers. Andre yeah. Heimgartner. Just getting settled earlier in the day, just trying to get cockpit comfort right with some lumbar support in the back of that thing in the driver's seat. And he talked about the car feeling extremely different to the cars that he's driven in the recent past. Remember, he was with Brad Jones Racing in the Enduros last year. This is great news to see Cam Waters out there. There's no way I would have thought that were possible when we saw that meet the wall early on. In fact, we both described a long night ahead for Tickford. It'll still be a long night because beneath this, there'll be a lot of minor work that needs to be done to tidy it all up to get it back into its mint brand new condition, the way in which it was delivered to the racetrack. But uh, at least he's going to get out there and qualify, and put in something of a representative effort. Tremendous performance by all. So with six minutes and five seconds remaining in armour all qualifying, Scott McLaughlin, Jamie Winkup, Mostert, Van Giz, Lowndes, Caruso, Pai, they're all in the lane at the moment and just sitting. James Courtney's actually split that group now up into six. And Waters up to 16th on his opening lap. So great job by everybody at Tickford there to repair that car. Cam Waters spears out first lap and gets himself to 16th. Now remembering, we are all talking now about getting into the top 10. Dave Reynolds has now gone up to position two. Andre Heimgarten, a great job. He comes up to position 10. Will Davison has come up to position five and Mark Winterbottom, after that little rub with the fence, has done a 20.39 to be position two. So Winterbottom and Reynolds have jumped Jamie Winkup. It's currently two tenths of a second separate the top five. But there will be another blast potentially on tyres, depending on whether they feel they're safe. Remember, this does not determine the grid for the front 10 positions. Armour um, qualifying today is about sorting out 11 through 26, but if you happen to be lucky enough to be in the top 10, you get the entry ticket into the top 10 shootout tomorrow. That'll be in the minds of everybody that's up near the sharper end of the timing sheet at the moment, because you don't want to waste a set of tyres if you can avoid it. That's exactly right. 24 tyres now from qualifying and for those two races. Remembering on the soft compound tyre, 
different tyre from last year, so everyone's pioneering a little bit in terms of year for year, grip for grip, day for day. Very hot conditions now. Track condition markedly different from earlier this morning. And Dave Reynolds doesn't go any faster. He did a 20.4 and then a 20.5 on that lap that we saw him finish. So McLaughlin, Winterbottom, Reynolds, Wink up, Davison, superb job. Holdsworth, also a great job. Mostert, Van Gisbergen, Lowndes, Courtney, that's the current 10. Richie Stanaway, the rookie, is 11th. Great job. Yeah, well, he said to me that he thought that his lap, despite having a he lost his best lap for climbing over the curb and despite that little glitch he thought that he was going to be on the fringe of the 10 so that's validated but we're not quite there yet we've still got the happy hour phase of this overall qualifying to come so three minutes and 37 seconds remaining there will be fireworks so mclaughlin's going to have a crack here he's got 0.14 of a second over winterbottom we saw the prospect that mostert may be able to at least trade punches with that number maybe better Reynolds is in here. Winterbottom is in here. Will Davison's done a remarkable job in car number 230 so far this weekend for Milwaukee Racing and Phil Monday in the ex Tickford Racing Ford Falcon. That's a great performance up into fifth. Lee Holdsworth's in the game here at the moment. So on the bubble is Richie Stanaway and just outside is Michael Caruso. We've got 10 people. McLaughlin, Winterbottom, Reynolds, Wincup, Davison, Holdsworth, Monster, Van Gies, Lowndes and Courtney. They're in at the moment, and I stress at the moment in bold. So Fabian Coulthard, he's 16th. Can he improve? Dave Reynolds is going to park it. I just heard them on the radio. They're going to live on the 20.4 and hope that that stays in the 10. A 10 now is separated by 0.5 of a second. 20.7 is the cusp. That's the threshold time. You've got to beat a 20.7 to get in there, but you might have to do a 20.5. The worry is that there's a bunch of people in that party. 20.4 and 5 is the popular number all the way down to about 9. So it, it's, it's risky, but they need to try and also preserve rubber. Okay, here we go. Two minutes of raw excitement, supercar style. got in store. He got through. He got through just. So that was the first breath holding moment because you worry about whether you'll surf clean over the top of the curb there and cop a hop. But that wasn't the case. Turn five. So Reynolds is out of the picture, but he's currently sitting in third. He'll watch with interest. McLaughlin winner bottom. Reynolds win cup. That thing was completely out of breath in second gear between turn six and seven. Now watch the run here to turn eight. turned in from then. How wide was the turn in point then? And have a look how wide Van Gisbergen is. He was right against the fence. Sensational driving. Shane Van Gisbergen's on for a ripping lap here. That was so wide he almost had the mirror touching the fence on the way into turn eight. So here's McLaughlin in the foreground. So the heavyweights are at one end of the track at the moment. The times will change. So McLaughlin hasn't shown any improvement, either personal or sector best. Van Gisbergen is the one to watch based on his numbers. So Scotty's done a 21.7, not a great lap at all, with 43 seconds remaining. But he is away again. Van Gis has done the 20.2 to put him up at P1. <laughs> so Shane, and he's got a curb hop on this lap, but his 20.2 is safe. Yep. Don't hold anyone up, please. So great job. Don't hold anyone up. Thank you. 10. Ten thousandths of a second. Zero, zero, one of a second is the margin between Van Gisbergen and McLaughlin. McLaughlin was the fastest. Now Winkup is the fastest in the first sector. So this is not over. Perkett jumps up. He comes up 16 positions to fifth. Who else is on the cast? Brip Kelly's gone into ninth. Courtney up 11 spots. Checkered flag is now out as we pick up Mark Winterbottom. We've got big trouble for Winkup in the wall. Car number one has hit the wall of turn eight. A disaster for the reigning champion. This is a big story. He's currently in seventh. Winkup has plucked the left-hand side off that car. OK, mate, just sit tight. Sit tight. Red flag. 
Well, the, we've already got the chequered flag out. So that is a huge, scary moment for Win Cup. He's spoken on the radio. James Courtney did a 20.25 just before that come out, Neil. That's a great lap by James Courtney. As we look on board now with Jamie Winkup. He's been the master. We've said it before, six pole positions at this place, but that is a very used-looking Red Bull Holden Racing Team ZB Commodore. So the drivers in varying sessions today that have made contact with the Turn 8 wall, James Courtney, Cam Waters, Jamie Winkup, Mark Winterbottom, Jack LeBrock, it's a fair lineup of talent, Absolutely. and we've seen people give it a real rush there. Now, good news is that Jamie's okay, but that car is not. That car certainly is, and here it is. So it's made contact quite early. We'll just try to get that a little bit earlier for you. But that damage, because you just can't keep it off the fence then, so there's two things that can happen. Here we go. Oh, gone. He actually lost the rear of the car, unlike any of the others so far. All the others have been essentially understeering, the front of the car lacking grip. There's that wheel going. The debris fencing did a really good job to contain that tyre and wheel that was firing off there. Now, have a look how sideways this car is. Sideways, sideways, misses the turning point, gets the grey, which is the outside slippery surface, and had no way of correcting that car. There's the tire, actually jumped over the car at that point there, that's quite lucky. And watch this, the debris fencing catches the tire and wheel. And it then runs down the escape road. Champion Gisberg was having a good look there. Well done, that could have been quite a big moment. So, what a slide. Have a look how sideways that car was. That reminds me of Glenn Seaton's one many years ago. That was a... That's punched through to the other side, to the right-hand side. So that's extensive damage. It's pushed everything across on the transaxle and all the rear suspension, and it's actually popped the right rear oh. wheel out the other side. Look at that. Force is unbelievable. So most of the time today, we've seen guys just miss the turning point and run into the fence with the front undergripped. That's Shane Van Gisbergen and Grant McPherson look on. Mark Dutton there to your left. David Couchy also looking. Now, having triggered a red... Um, He'll lose his fastest time, won't he? Yeah. Which that's already done, hasn't it? So that's a good So they were having a big discussion about it. Meantime, on the other side of the garage, Shane Van Gisbergen's done the job. Yeah, it was going to be close, yeah. Shane Van Gisbergen now obviously looking on at the replays there of the teammate uh, in turn eight. There was a massive crash, but uh, well, let's focus on the positive there for you. Clean lap. Um, there was maybe some others that were going to challenge it, but still, yep. uh, how are the conditions out there? Yeah, it's good. Um, been getting better and better all day. That wasn't nice to come around and see wheels and stuff flying everywhere, but I hear Jamie's OK. That's the main thing, and hopefully the car can be fixed for tomorrow. But, um, well, it should be. But, um, yeah, feels right. Good way to start with the new Commodore. Yeah, what do you reckon uh, just, you know, places to work on? As always, you're always working to improve yeah. these things. Conditions, how much they change from the uh, from yep. practice two to now? Well, we have a lot of understeer in the high speed, and it might be a car thing, but everyone else seems to be complaining on the whole field when we, when we listen. But, yeah, feels all right. We're slowly starting to understand it. It requires quite a few different things, so the way we're tuning the car is different to how we'd tune last year's car. But... Yeah, feels good. Good so far. And you're continuing this run of uh, being in the shootouts, mate. I don't know what the number is now, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's good. I don't want to break it. <laughs> I think you're all good there. luck. Just happy to be there. <laughs> Fantastic performance by Shane Van Gisberg. And I think that number, by the way, is something like 33 consecutive top 10 shootouts for him. So he adds another one to that. Congratulations on a brilliant lap in very hot conditions. And he gets home by the tiniest of margins. 0 0.0010, the gap between Shane Van Gisberg and and Scotty McLaughlin in the final analysis. And the confirmation did come through from race control while the interview was going on that Jamie Wincup loses that fastest lap. That pops him back to ninth. And now the big question, just as we had with Cam Waters early in the day, can they turn that car around? It looks like the damage on car one is even more substantial than car number six. So Jack LeBrock at the back end of the field. We saw him also in the wars at turn eight. Two and a half seconds to find. Cam Waters, I think most people after practice two would have written you off and said that we weren't going to see this car until tomorrow. Fantastic that the team got this car for you uh, out there for qualifying. How was it? Um, 
Oh, yeah, it's awesome team effort. I'm so proud of the, the guys at Tickford and everyone that put in to get this car back out there. So, um, yeah, I thought my day was finished, but um, yeah, managed to get back out, which was absolutely awesome work. And um, the car wasn't wasn't perfect. The steering was out and didn't have the right springs and stuff in it. But um, we got out there and, yeah, that, that next last, or that last lap before the red come out would have probably almost got me in the 10. So, um, yeah, I'm wrapped. Mega job by the team to, to get some pace out of the car as well. What does need to happen overnight to really just neaten everything up for tomorrow? Um, yeah, they'll just probably go through the whole car again. They'll um, scale it and, and make sure everything they put in is actually right. So, um, yeah, I'm actually pretty shocked that it was as good as it was, to be completely honest with you. Fantastic job by the team. Thanks, Cam. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, Will Davison. Uh, no, no, go on. You, you, you hydrate yourself, <laughs> mate. Give those uh, biceps a flex. Uh, <laughs> Ree's watching. Hey, um, mate, uh, that's very, very impressive to come out of the box. You were fastest Falcon a lot of the day. Uh, has that surprised you? Listen, I've been doing this long enough um, not to, to expect anything. You know, knowing that uh, the effort the guys have gone into, the attention to detail, the equipment we've got, I know anything's possible, but we're a complete start-up operation where we've been focusing on so many other elements. But uh, I sort of said, listen, if everything clicks this weekend, we can be in the, in the hunt, but let's not expect it because we don't know the car yet. We don't know anything. But from the moment we rolled it out, I was just like, yeah, like it's got some really nice traits. But a few times, the more I pushed on, I started, you know, making a few little errors and those little idiosyncrasies of the car. So, again, the first run, then I panicked a bit because all of a sudden the track's heated up. We're out of the window with the tyres. What do we do? Uh, but then we, we nailed it on that next set and that set was even better at the end then, but I went quicker, but the red came out just before I crossed the line. Mate, it's really good to see you up there at the outset. Keep it up, mate. Great stuff. Long year ahead, but there we go. Great Cheers. Stuff.